So the first of our three candle holders that I'm gonna be building is going to be this set of tower candle stands. And there's a couple of things that I really like about this design. The first is it doesn't use a whole lot of material, especially if you only build one of them, which is what I'm gonna do. It's a perfect opportunity to use that one random board that you have, or maybe some scraps that you saved. Next thing that I like is that the construction's pretty simple. It has four sides, and all the sides are joined by a miter joint. Into the sides, we have a square window cut to allow you to see the candle, and covering that is some lattice work. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece of air-dried walnut. It's a beautiful board, and it's gonna start by getting this all cleaned up, broken down to size, and then we'll head over to the router table to cut some joinery. So now that I have my pieces all milled down, they're plain to thickness, and I've cut them to width, we're ready to go ahead and cut the joinery. Now I've left these a little bit long, and once I have everything cut, we'll trim them to final length. Now we could cut the joinery, which like I said was a miter joint, at the table saw, but I find getting that blade tilt just right can really be finicky. So instead, especially on thin stock like this, I like to cut at the router table. And it's a simple process using a 45 degree chamfer bit. I'm going to make a cut on both sides, maybe make it in two passes just to make sure we have a clean cut, and then we'll head over to the bench and talk about cutting the window in these. So now that we have the miters cut on the sides of our candle stand, we can go ahead and lay out the window. Now, a couple things to note here. First, I've went ahead and cut everything to final length. In this case, I'm building the medium one. It's 12 inches. Also, now that these miters are cut, we have a pretty delicate edge right along there, and it is sharp. So be careful with it, don't ding it up or else that will show up in the final project. So cutting the window is pretty simple, but it starts off by making a template. And I've already made one here, and this one is just half inch MDF, and I've laid out the window location, and that spacing is the same as it will be on my side panels. So I know by registering that template to the top and the sides, my window is going to be in the right location. So let's go ahead and lay these out. I can. Register both sides and the top, make sure that's flush. And then we will just draw our window in here. Okay. Once that's laid out, simple trip over to the drill press will leave us with four corners that are drilled out. So once you have the holes drilled, we can go ahead and cut the waste out with the jigsaw. With a sharp blade and jigsaw, you can make quick work of cutting those windows out. But there is a little bit of cleanup to do to square everything up, and that's where we're going to use this template again. You can simply stick it down with double-sided tape, and then use a flush trim bit in the router table to trim everything square. And that leaves us here with a nicely cut window. It's smooth on the inside, and all we have left to do is a little bit of chisel work to clean up the corners. So the last thing we have to take care of before we can glue this together is to cut the decorative bevel along the inside top edge of each one of these sides. Now, of course, you could do this at the router table with that 45 degree chamfer bit that we use to cut the sides. However, this is a pretty quick task with a hand plane, so that's what I'll do. I've just laid out that bevel on top using a marking gauge. And to mark the inside and the top face, and then as I'm making passes of the plane, and I'm judging my progress based on where my cut is in relation to both those lines. We want it to be even all the way down, and it tells us it's at 45 degrees. So we'll just plane down to those lines, then we'll go ahead and get it glued together. Now with something long like this candle stand with a long miter on it, I like to use tape as a hinge. This is just normal, painter's tape. We'll pull off a length that is as long as our sides. We'll basically 
use that like a hinge. We'll line up both sides. There we go. Okay, now we, all we have to do is spread some glue, roll it up, tape it together, let it dry. So one of the last things we need to take care of for this set of candle stands is gonna be this lattice work that covers the windows. Now you can see on this original, it's made out of bird's eye maple, and the lattice work is wange. But the dark wange on top of walnut, I think would look a little weird. So instead, I'm gonna draw inspiration from a project from last season and use aluminum. I really like the color combination of the walnut with the aluminum, and it will match the picture frame I built last season. Cutting aluminum at the table saw is pretty easy. Really all it takes is a special blade and that's a non-ferrous metal cutting blade. And I already have that installed here. So I'm gonna start by setting a stop block and cutting the long uprights for the windows. And then I'll cut the shorter horizontal pieces and then we'll notch the ends and add the half lap joints. You know, the metal cutting blade in the table saw does a really good job of cutting the aluminum, but it does leave some ridges and it leaves some burrs on the aluminum parts. So there's two things here. You wanna be careful when you're handling them because those burrs can be sharp. And we're gonna to need to do a little bit of fine tuning to get those ridges knocked away. And to do that, just clamp it in a vise and use a normal file. Just make a couple passes and the aluminum soft, so it will cut really cleanly and really easily. And then you'll be left with a pretty smooth surface. Once you have a set of these done, they simply snap together. Then it's a simple matter of sticking them in the window to install them. Now I'm gonna to wait to actually glue these in place, which will be with five minute epoxy uh, until I've applied a finish. And I think it'll just be cleaner that way. So after I get all those installed, there's one last thing to take care of. And that's the actual candle stand that it, the candle will sit on inside the holder. Now in the plans, it calls for a platform to be dadoed inside of there. And obviously I didn't do that when I built this one. And that's because when we were looking at the originals, one of them was a little different. And this tall one here, didn't have a platform on the inside. Instead, it has a column that the candle sits on and it fits perfectly inside of the holder. And I think I'm gonna do that with mine. So I'm just gonna glue together some uh, stock that I have, drill a hole for the recess for the candle to sit in, and I'll paint it dark like this one is. But after that's done, everything's ready for a finish, then it's ready to go on your shelf. Woodsmithplans.com hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. WoodsmithPlans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.